recently saw an ad online for the Picasso guitar bow. And I'm not really sure I ever really wanted to play the guitar with a violin bow, but I was kind of curious because it's small and inexpensive, and I figured I'd try it out. I already have the electronic bow, or the e-bow, some of you may be familiar with, which gives a pretty great sound. It resonates the guitar string, and then you just need to hold the, the note down, and you get this great sustain. This is a, is a very versatile piece of equipment and you can get some awesome sounds out of it. Particularly on the electric guitar, um, but it does work just as well on the acoustic. So knowing that I have this and I've used it on some recordings and I've used it live, wasn't really so sure I needed an electric bow, but was intrigued, so I bought it. So what you get with the Picasso bow is a nice little handy box and inside the box you get a little carrying case, should you want the carrying case, you get uh, a cloth, and I'll explain what that's about in a second. Um, you get the bow, and you get some rosin, and you get you get some sandpaper with the rosin too. So the idea is that you are supposed to the first time you play this, scratch the rosin with the sandpaper until you see a fine dusting appear, and then you use the dusting to apply to the bow. And when the hairs of the bow are sufficiently rosined, you can then play this thing. It also has a guitar pick attached to it, so presumably you can you can strum with the other end of the bow, but that's got to be the most uncomfortable guitar pick I've ever seen in my life, so I'm not sure that that's really going to be um, that useful. I wonder on certain future versions, are they going to be able to customize that? Because if you like a light pick, not a heavy pick, then this is not going to be the pick you want on the end of this bow. So just got this, and having read the instructions online, you know, I thought the bow would just immediately be useful and you could just start playing the guitar right away, but, you know, I didn't really understand that you were going to have to scratch some rosin powder and apply that to the bow, which the first time you do it may take a little more time than every subsequent time, but it, it's just an extra step. At least with the Ebo, you can, you can get this thing out and play right away with it. Having to apply some sort of substance to the bow just makes it a little less versatile. Um, haven't played it yet, so I shouldn't comment too heavily. The other thing is that once you've played it, you know, you've got this, this cloth, and the idea of the cloth is that you're supposed to clean the strings after you play it, and that's also um, an extra step. Some guitar players clean their strings after they play anyway. Uh, I haven't really done that unless I'm really hammering away a live show and you're under the hot lights and you're sweating a lot, then sure, clean the guitar after, but in general I'm not one of these guys who fanatically cleans his guitar every single time he plays, but um, you do need to use this to clean the resin off the bow, uh, off the strings each time you play. So already having looked at that accoutrement of bits and bobs that go in the package, um, it's more than I expected. I thought I was just buying a, a bow that I could immediately start getting sound out of, but no, there's a whole process and a cleaning ritual. The website for Picasso Bow also says that you should um, use a dedicated string cleaning solution at least once a week. So you're cleaning it every time you play and then once a week you're supposed to clean the strings off too. So it's a bit of a production, and I think it's all going to come down to well, how great is the sound. If the sound is just really phenomenal and something unique and special and new and you really want to work with it a lot, then okay. Otherwise, it might just be a little bit of a gimmick. So I'm going to go ahead and start applying some of the rosin 
and then just gonna have a go of it on the guitar and see what it sounds like. Instructions say you can't apply too much of this onto the bow and that if the sound you're getting out of the guitar is a little too squeaky or not loud enough then you need to apply more of this so we're going to apply a bit more and see if that gets us a slightly better sound because that was a little harsh and squeaky. <laughs> Remind you of your niece's violin practice? sounding and it's a little hard to get a beautiful sound out of it. Um, obviously there's a level of practice involved and probably more rows than needed but compared to the Ebo where it's plug and play I'm definitely not feeling great about it already. that in any coherent way as a guitar pick you know and swap around between bowing and picking I just I think that's a little bit of a gimmick um, that's just attached to it um, not really a significantly useful feature uh, as for the bow itself um, on first examination that's pretty tough to get a beautiful sound out of and it's pretty tough to actually master as opposed to the Ebo which just a little more straightforward. It's also a little bit difficult to conceive of how you would play anything other than one or maybe two strings at a time because it's a pretty long bow, I mean short by comparison to a violin bow, but to try to get any sustained note you've got to have a significant portion of it dipped into the sound hole, right? So. So you're not really going to be able to chop and change which string you're playing at very quickly because you're, you've are you got to pull the bow all the way out and pulling the bow all the way out quickly enough to get it into another set of strings without actually getting some stray notes it feels mechanically like it's a little limited in how it's going to apply to developing melodies across the entire fretboard you're going to kind of be limited to whatever string or two you're closest to does give a kind of a beautiful baroque sound and I'm sure if you got very used to it and very adept at it you could do some pretty cool things but it still feels just a little limited. I have to 
to spend a bit more time with it and just try to get used to it and see if I can get a better contour of the sound. But honestly, my first impression so far is that it's not the most versatile and easy to use thing. It's a little limited in how it applies and there's just a whole process involved in preparing for it, playing, and then afterwards cleaning the strings, which it, it, it feels a little bit like some of the guitar pedals that I've used where um, you just get a really special and unique sound, but you're just not going to use that at every show and you're not going to use it in every song you write. But for that one or two moments that you use it, particularly when you're recording a song and you want to make it just sound that little bit more unique, then you're glad you have the pedal, but it's not something you're going to pull out and use on a frequent basis. So um, yeah, that's my initial impression, but let me take a few more days with it, play around with it a bit more, and uh, see if I like it any better. Well, I've had a couple of days to play around with this thing, and, um, and I still find that some of the original hesitation is there. It's pretty hard to change strings when you're playing this. You're kind of stuck on the strings that you've you got the bow next to. So to take it out and move strings, you're, you're going to have stray noises. It also has a kind of a grating sort of sound, and unless you develop a pretty deft touch or you're familiar with playing violin, you're probably going to have a little bit of um, sound leakage and stray noises. I also find that because you're limited to one string or two strings at a time, it's not a lot of fun to play solo unless you have some kind of accompaniment because you're limited to melodies that you can do up and down one or two strings. So in that respect, I think if you're playing with a backing track or with other musicians, maybe it's going to offer you some better capabilities. In fact, looking online at some of the review videos and other musicians who've posted a couple of tunes using one of these, um, a lot of the time I'm finding that they are posting using a looper pedal or backing track and some effects pedals to get certain atmospherics and that seems to be what's suggested by uh, by the Picasso bow. It seems to lend itself to atmospheric and ambient kind of playing. I'm just going to lay down a pretty basic chord progression in D minor with a drop D. Uh, after I've looped that I'm going to use my cathedral stereo reverb pedal and my Earthquaker device C machine just to put a little touch on some of the the um, solo I'm going to add on to it and let's just see if in that kind of context we get a better more favorable impression of what the Picasso guitar bow can do.
So having got myself a little backing track where I could actually intersperse some individual notes, then it kind of masks the fact that you're a little limited. Um, you can only touch individual strings at a time. You're not going to be able to flow quite like you can with an electronic bow, with the e bow, or just general playing, um, which means that you can kind of highlight the specific unique sound that you get with this Picasso bow. And with that in mind, I think um, I accomplished a nice enough sound. Uh, I will say that I intentionally put a lot of effects on that, um, inspired by some of the other videos I'd seen online where a little bit of atmospherics, echo, reverb, that kind of thing, just cleans up some of the noise and makes it a little more easier to digest, a bit more palatable. So with that in mind, I think it does have its uses, it does have a unique sound, I think it's worth playing around with, but um, it is a bit of a production to get going and it's, a, you know, it's going to take practice to really master the thing and given that you're not going to spend your entire day playing with it or your, all of your guitar time playing with it, it's going to be tough to anticipate becoming some kind of a master craftsman in this thing. The big downside for me is it does leave a lot of rosin on the strings so you're going to have to clean that and even after cleaning it you still feel like there's there's um, residue on the strings, which is not fun. If you're gonna play with a plectrum, maybe you're not gonna feel that, but if you're trying to finger pick or play with your hands, you can feel that on your fingers and it kind of detracts from using the guitar then for non-bowing playing. So um, it, this is kind of a cool thing, but you gotta know what you're getting into. It has its disadvantages. So that's it. I hope you liked the video and I hope you liked the little song I put together just to demonstrate the kind of sounds that someone like me, not a professional full-time player, can get out of this a piece of equipment after just a couple of days of ownership. Um, if you liked the video, please go ahead and click the like button. Uh, leave some comments if you have some feedback on the video or if you have some experience with this or some of the other um, similar pieces of equipment that are out there. I'd love to hear uh, what you guys are all using and uh, please go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you can be notified of new videos when they come out too. Uh, thanks very much again. Have a good one. Rosen? Roshin? Rosin? I'm not a violin player. <laughs>